Good afternoon, and welcome to St. Paul the Apostle Parish. Our celebrant today is Father Dennis Fury, assisted by Deacon John. Today this is the fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Jesus invites us to bring our burdens to him, for he is meek and humble of heart. Let us turn our hearts and minds to the Lord our God by pausing for a moment of silent prayer. Please stand and join us in our opening hymn, number 531, The Eyes and Hands of Christ, number 531. Two or three are gathered in my head. Love will be found, life will abide. By name we are called, from water we are sent to become the eyes and hands of Christ. Good afternoon. I wanted to uh, introduce uh, Father Dennis Fury. M many of you know him. He's been here several years already, but some of you are kind of new to, to him. So uh, just to, he'll be with us for this weekend and next weekend while Father Mark is out catching fish, hopefully. <laughs> In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came for those who labor and are burdened. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you invite us to share your yoke. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your yoke is easy and your burden is light. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We pray. You alone are the Lord. 
let us pray. Sorry. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you. A just savior is he, meek and riding on an ass, on the colt, the foal of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banned, and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. I will extol you, O my God and King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. The Lord is faithful in all his words and holy in all his works. The Lord lifts up all A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. 
If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through the spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The Word of the Lord. Blessing, Father. As your hand and your lips, so that we will proclaim this gospel. Hallelujah. The mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father. Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, All you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Come to me, O you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. Allow me to give my short homily around these words. Many of us and many people we know are carrying heavy burdens heavy bags, heavy backpacks. Anxieties and fears burden all of us. Fears about our economy, the cost of food and fuel, home values and mortgages. We are worried about what's happening to our children, terrorism, and so on. The list seems endless and overwhelming. Some are working on stressed marriage relationships that they fear will break up. Some are unemployed or underemployed and are looking for a better job that will give them a reliable and adequate source of income. 
the burdens of COVID-19 are still weighing down on us. Some have terminal illnesses or indeed are waiting for results from the hospital with that very big worry as to what the results will be like. Some are trying to provide for and shape the characters of their children. Children that are influenced by all that is immoral and degrading in our culture. Many parents feel like they are taken for granted and not appreciated. And, they are, and that they are simply being used while getting nothing back out of life for what they have put into it. And so all of us are laboring under so many burdens. Burdens of self-doubt, burdens of self-blame, shame, and guilt. And these burdens will lead to worry, stress, and depression. And Satan smiles about that. Satan is very happy. The devil is very happy. Maybe as, even as we speak now, as we worship together, many of us are unable to concentrate and fully give ourselves to God because our minds are drifting to the problems and worries and burdens that we have. And laboring under such burdens, we are here at Mass today, and Jesus tells us, come to me. Come to me, all you who labor and are overburdened. I will give you rest. Carry my yoke. Learn from me, for I am humble and meek of heart. It feels like a hug from Jesus hugging us. A hug especially for all of us who feel the weight of the world on our shoulders. And the reading contains some of the most consoling words in the Bible. Jesus simply says, I'm here for you. I'm gentle. I'll be gentle with you. I understand what you are going through. I understand your pain. I want to help you. I want to soothe you and make it better for you. Come to me, lean on me, trust me. Trust me with your life. Trust me with your problems and your pain. I can ease your pain. I can forgive the sin. I can make things better. Come. And his invitation, he uses the image of a yoke, an image familiar to the farmers of his time, a wooden beam placed over the neck of two animals as they pull the cart or plow so that they are at the same level, same pace. In the Bible, the yoke was often used also as a symbol of bondage, oppression, from which God had delivered the enslaved people of Israel. And at the time of Moses, at the time of Jesus rather, the Torah, the law of Moses, originally intended to help the Israelites, had become another yoke, another burden, another form of oppression. This was because the religious leaders had added to the Ten Commandments 613 more commandments, placing a burden on the shoulders of the people. And so growing up in Nazareth, Jesus lived and worked among ordinary people. He had first-hand experience of their struggles and frustrations. He felt for them, and he reached out to them with compassion and kindness, healing their sicknesses, 
dispensing God's mercy, casting out demons, and giving them hope. He castigated the Pharisees and scribes for crushing people with impossible burdens, impossible demands, without ever lifting a finger to ease the burden. And so Jesus wanted to free the people from unnecessary burdens. So he invited them to surrender to his loving embrace and accept his gentle yoke. And he promised that if they give themselves to him, they would find peace and solace. Jesus makes the same invitation to you and me. He makes the same promise to you and me today. And he's not telling us that following him is always going to be easy, not at all. To embrace the yoke of Jesus means choosing to live by the standards of the gospel, not the standards of the world. And you know what the standards of the world are now. In such circumstances, embracing the yoke of Jesus may prove quite demanding. But we are not left to ourselves. Jesus is always with us. We are yoked to him. And Jesus is saying, join yourself to me and join your hopes and cares, your fears and struggles to me. Let me work with you, he invites us. He does not say go. He says, he says come to me, meaning he wants to accompany us. He wants to make our burdens light. Some of us may be saying, well, I've tried, I've done my best, I've read the Bible, I've gone to church, I've sat on the pew, but I haven't found relief. My burdens don't seem to be getting any lighter. With due respect, could it be that I went to a church but never met Jesus face to face? Notice that the verse says, come to me. It's easy to go to the wrong place. And going to the wrong place brings the wrong results. We have to go to the right place. We have to go to Jesus. That's why he says, come to me. Where do you go to? Dear friends, today we are invited to let go of the back, 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 backpack, the bag, carrying stones, burdens. Let Jesus have your rocks. Go to the cross. Look at the man hanging there. Do you see the thorns on his head? The whip marks on his body the nails in his hands and feet. He is going through that pain to save you and me, to make you right with God. And he's going through that pain so that you won't have to carry that heavy burden. Set your bag, leave your bag under the cross, and pick up the Lord that Jesus promises you. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Jesus also invites us to learn from him. He is gentle and humble and just. A true disciple must be humble and gentle and compassionate and loving. My friends in Christ, Jesus beckons us. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavily laden. I will give you rest. This invitation is not for the proud-hearted because they hardly realize they are overburdened and they need help. It is for the simple and humble of heart who need God's intervention. It's for those who shoulder the burdens of their families, their marriages, it's an invitation extended to those genuinely seeking God's face. Jesus invites us to let him help us. He is meek and humble in heart, at heart. He didn't come to condemn, 
He came to save us. Don't you think it's time to put down that burden that keeps dragging you down? Don't you think it's time to leave the past in the past and let Jesus have your future? Come and lay your burdens from the past at the altar and leave them there. You'll be glad you did. As I conclude, dear friends, all of us have received invitations for functions or to functions. Receiving an invitation from someone is a reminder that we are in a relationship with that person and that that particular person wants to share something with us, whatever it may be. In today's gospel, Jesus extends an invitation to you and me and a promise to those who are willing to be his followers, those whom he refers to as little ones. He invites them as well as you and me and all who hear his word this day to come to him, to take up his yoke and to find rest in him. He awaits us. He always awaits us. Not to magically resolve our problems, not at all, but to strengthen us in the middle of problems. Jesus does not lift the burdens from our lives, but the anguish from our hearts. He does not take away our cross, but carries it with us. And with him, every burden becomes light because he is the comfort we seek. Let us also learn by the same token, to help others who are carrying heavy burdens today. Amen. Shall we now rise and profess our faith? I believe in one God. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us, men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And with the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified, and upon us, Pilate, suffered death, and was buried. He rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and was seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, so spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism of us of sins. And I look forward to the rest of the church. Dad. Um, they always put it in the wrong place. Amen. We now come before God empty-handed, confident that our concerns will be heard. For all of our diocesan parishes, especially those experiencing pastoral changes, that the faithful will support and embrace their new leaders, we pray to the Lord. Lord. <clears throat> For an end to violence in our society, especially the violence of abortion, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For the protection of our military and first responders who risk their own welfare to protect us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those in poverty and those who are homeless, that they will receive what they need in terms of food and shelter, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick, that their hearts might be filled with peace and hope and God's healing mercy, we pray to the Lord. 
for all those who have died, especially Barbara Regis, that they may share the Lord's victory over death and live forever in the peace of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those on our parish prayer list, for the intentions written in our book of prayers, and for those prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intentions of this Mass, George Buck and Robert Corcoran, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of peace, you send us into the world with the message of your Son. Hear and grant the prayers we offer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please help us sing the presentation song, number 352, A Place at Your Table, number 352. Saint and the sinner, your friends, now reconciled at this banquet divine, the promise of life without end, the promise of life without end. Here in your presence, the greatest are least. The burden find rest and the hungry can feast. By love we're invited, her mercy prevails. God in your goodness we share a place at your table. A place at your table. From this communion in one heart and mind. Out into mission we go, no greater love shall the world ever find, and none shall we ever know, and none shall we ever know. In your presence the greatest are least, the burden find rest and the hungry can feast. By love we're invited, here mercy prevails. God in your goodness we share a place at your table. 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 My sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our youth and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Hosanna in the highest. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like they do for, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Ronald, our Bishop, all of us here gathered and all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, Saint Paul, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father Lord, in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, thy will be done on, on the earth as it is. Give us this day our bread. Forgive us our trespasses. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Sir. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those caught to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Please help us sing the communion Body song number three thirty five. Taste and see Body number three three five. Body of Christ. 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 Taste and see. Taste and see. The
my soul shall glory in the Lord. For He has been so good to me. Taste and see, taste and see. Let us pray. <clears throat> Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just one announcement this evening. Next weekend, we'll be taking up the collection, the mission collection for Chapada Zambia. The, the diocese that, that Father is, is part of. And uh, we've always been generous at this time of year, and so keep it up. So we'll be doing a second collection next week. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened. I'll give you rest, says the Lord. It's an invitation. Unfortunately, you can say yes or no to an invitation. I hope and pray all of us will I'll accept the invitation by Jesus to go to him. The Lord be with you. And with, and your, with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us end this time of worship and praise by singing number 739. Lead me, Lord, number 739. Blessed are the poor in spirit, longing for their Lord. For God's coming kingdom shall be theirs. Blessed are the sorrowing, for they shall be consoled. And the meek shall come to rule the world. Leave me, Lord, leave me, Lord.
and lead me, Lord, to die.